Welcome to the ARE 5.0 video test prep series. In this video, we'll take an in-depth look at the Programming and Analysis Division. This division focuses on the evaluation of project requirements, constraints, and opportunities. You'll need to demonstrate an understanding of and ability to analyze project types, establish qualitative and quantitative project requirements, evaluate project sites and context, and assess economic issues. You'll also explore issues related to programming, site analysis, and zoning and code requirements. You'll have three hours to answer 75 questions in this division, which includes sections on environmental and contextual conditions, codes and regulations, site analysis and programming, building analysis, and programming. In the environmental and contextual conditions section, you'll evaluate a project site and identify both the opportunities and constraints that may impact future development. Let's look at a sample question. A Parks and Recreation Society has approached an architect to construct a picnic pavilion, restroom facility, and recreational volleyball courts on a riverfront property. The client has requested that the development of the site be environmentally responsive and cost effective. Click on the area of the site plan below where the architect should recommend the development be located. Here is the correct response. The architect should recommend the southeastern region of the site. The Site Planning and Design Handbook discusses site analysis, sustainability, and development principles that can be directly applied to the evaluation of this riverfront property. The southeastern area of the site is relatively flat, limiting the amount of construction dollars dedicated to excavation and related site work. It is also located outside of the defined floodplain, reducing the potential risk of water damage to the buildings and recreational courts over time. This is an AE level item requiring you to evaluate the existing site constraints to determine which areas of the site may inhibit development. You must also determine which areas of the site present design opportunities that fulfill the client's requirements. In the codes and regulations section, you'll focus on the appropriate codes and regulations for the initial analysis and programming phase of a project. Let's look at a sample question. An architect has been selected to complete a major interior and exterior renovation of all areas within a three-story library building. The building was constructed in the early 1980s. During the programming phase of the project, which of the following should the architect recommend to the client regarding accessibility? Only the public spaces need to be made accessible. Only the primary function spaces need to be made accessible. All areas of the library should be made accessible, or since this is a renovation of an existing building, Accessibility upgrades are not required. Here is the correct response. The ADA standards for accessible design require all altered elements and spaces within a renovation project to comply with the accessibility standards. Since this is a major renovation of all areas within the building, the architect should recommend that all areas of the library be made accessible. This is a UA level item requiring you to identify accessibility requirements that are applicable to a renovation project. In the Site Analysis and Programming section, you'll analyze a project site relative to the program and project requirements. Let's look at a sample question. An architect is completing a feasibility study for a small marine research facility. The following site information has been provided by the client. Located in a remote area near the seashore, undeveloped except for a small storage building that will be demolished, contains a small area of wetlands adjacent to an environmentally protected area. As part of the feasibility study, what documentation should the architect evaluate? Check the four that apply. FEMA maps, geotechnical report, traffic report, structural report, topographic survey, hydraulic conditions report. These are the correct responses. According to the Site Planning and Design Handbook, evaluating FEMA maps, geotechnical reports, topographic surveys, and hydraulic conditions reports are critical in understanding the site's potential for coastal flooding, the makeup and stability of the soils, the potential earthwork requirements, and how the presence of water and wetlands may impact development. Since this is an undeveloped and remote site, a traffic report and structural report would not be necessary for this feasibility study. This is an AE level item requiring you to analyze the site information provided and determine what documentation should be evaluated to assess the feasibility of the project. In the Building Analysis and Programming section, you'll analyze new or existing buildings relative to the programming requirements, cost, and schedule. Let's look at a sample question. 
an architect is completing an adjacency diagram for a new high school in a rural community. The client has provided the following requirements. The playing fields will be used by the school and community for daytime and evening sporting events. Convenient access to the fields should be provided to all visitors. The central atrium needs to be a key gathering space during school hours, as well as host school and community related events in the evening. Additionally, it will serve as a pre-function space for events held in the auditorium. The restrooms need to be connected to both the gymnasium and central atrium. The office will provide faculty and student support throughout the school day. The main entry will be the secured point of entry for students and visitors. Drag the labels on the left into the appropriate bubbles of the diagram to show the required programmatic relationships. Here is the correct response. To complete this bubble diagram, you'll need to understand the spatial relationships of the high school as they relate to the program and client's requirements. The playing fields require convenient access for both daytime and evening activities, making the best location within close proximity to the school as well as the parking area. The central atrium should be located central to the major program spaces with a connection to the main entry for a secured access to evening events. Since the central atrium is also a pre-function space for the auditorium, the spaces should be directly connected. The restrooms have a direct connection between the gymnasium and central atrium, while also being in close proximity to the auditorium for use during performances and events. The classroom's proximity to the office provides convenient access for faculty and student support throughout the school day. This is an AE level item requiring the analysis of horizontal functional relationships as they relate to the building program and client requirements. For more information about the programming and analysis division, refer to the ARE guidelines. Comments? Questions? Let us know. Be sure to check out the ARE 5.0 community for expert advice and tips from fellow candidates. And for more information about the content covered in each division and tips on navigating the exam interface, please watch our other ARE 5.0 test prep videos.